because it's a four mana two three flyer. Ooh. Let me tell you, Battle Box All Star also. I'd assume so. A card's uh, pushed, a as they say. But not Fatal Push, unless you're a bolt. Okay, right. so two Ugin the Ineffable is going to be pretty important. Uh, so that's that's Gordon's side of the matchup, and now we have Chris Haw. Looks like he's on Basilica Bell Hunt, which I think is worse than Lee Guard Mage in this matchup. So that's uh, one plus for uh, for Gordon's side. It looks like Gordon has no Nar Narset in the main, whereas oh, it's it's not a mirror. It's not 100% Amir. They're both playing Esper Hero, though. Chris Haw has one Command the Dreadhorde. Oh, okay. And here we go. Speaking and of three Narset and one Elder Spell. So I think he's better set up for the Mirror. Okay, there you go. Speaking of uh, craziness, that's a, a Thief of Sanity, and Chris is not going to kill it. Yeah. So this is this is where uh, what I was talking about, where it's huge who's on the play and who's on the draw. So if, if Chris had been on the play, he would have been able to play Narset minus... Or Gordon would have played his Thief, then Chris would have untapped and minus again, and most likely hit a removal spell for the Thief, like he just hit a Tyrant Scorn. But because Gordon was on the play, he gets to untap with his Thief, and either get rid of one activation on Narset, or hit Chris and draw a card. Most likely going to hit Chris here and draw a card. Uh, it looks like oh, oh. that's four cards, should be three. Okay, yeah, not quite yeah. impulsive. Not impu a little impulsive of Chris. Need to anticipate, <laughs> <laughs> need to anticipate the right Stop number of cards. It. <laughs> it's because he has a Narset in play, I think. Yeah, uh, oh, which which minus is to look at the top four. Yeah. So he's looking at a Tyrant Scorn and a Narset and one okay, other card. So, so you know that the card that Andrew got is pretty good if he's putting a Narset in a, and a Tyrant Scorn in your graveyard. Yeah. The Narset especially. It's interesting that... Um, huh. That uh, Andrew Gordon just didn't play anything. So what do you think that tells to you? you think that tells like Raska's Contempt? Uh, he might be holding up something. He could be holding up a counter spell to try and uh, save his thief from what might happen. Like a Dovin's veto. Yeah, I'm gonna see if he has any in his list. Oh, never mind. He has Chris's Dovin's veto. Oh, yikes! Yeah, it looks like Chris has. Oh, it's <laughs> cut off. Oh, two two Dovin's veto, and Andrew himself has zero Dovin's veto. Wow. So, you know, sometimes you don't need your own. You can just use your opponents. Yep. And, like, we're going to get another attack in here. Yep. Andrew's going to get another Anticipate. Awkward uh, mana draw from Chris. He's been playing his Drowned Catacombs as Guildgates in this game. I mean, Demir Guildgate is a powerful card. Oh, definitely. It taps for blue and black mana. It's, I've definitely thought about registering it at a Pro Tour once in my life. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I drafted it in the limited portion. Must be nice to get the gate stick. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you drafted... The Demir Goldgate at Pro Tour Ravnica Allegiance? Yep. No, you didn't. Yes, don't I did. you dare lie to me. Don't, 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 don't fact check me. <laughs> don't, don't lie to the viewers. <laughs> All right, here. So we're going to see a fifth land here. Oh, bam. <laughs> okay. All right, I guess your opponent's deck is better than your deck, is, is what he's yeah. saying. Yeah. Thief is kind of just a busted uh, card. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is looking a little sad. Yep. And I don't want to harp on this too much, but again, it just goes back to, to play draw. Play draw is just, you know, obviously very, very huge part of Magic, and uh, it's put on display here where Chris, Chris would be in a great position if he was on the play, but you know, in a pretty bad position on the draw. No, oh, yeah. All right, we're gonna see what Chris wants to do. Looks like he's gonna play his own Teferi. Probably try to bounce the thief, I assume. Actually, I learned on stream for the seventeenth time that you cannot actually Teferi minus another Planeswalker. <laughs> I, th I always thought you could. Yeah, no, that's a no. Yeah, you um, I think Chris should have held up a blue black land and a white black land. So, isolated chapel and a drowned catacomb. Yep. Uh, just to, you know, what if, what if he draws a Dovin's Veto or something here? Right. It doesn't mean, is that a, what is, a card is that? Is that the Command the Dreadhorde he just drew? I think it is. Command the Dreadhorde's a pretty huge mirror breaker. Yeah, you Especially get... when uh, your opponent's been milling you with uh, Thief of Sanity. Okay, so imagine on your opponent's end step, you plush your Teferi, then you flash and Command the Dreadhorde. I mean, that's a thing. Oh, I'm excited. That's actually a thing in the four-color Dreadhorde deck. I, I hope that actually happens. You ever just cast Command the Dreadhorde in combat before blocks and just eat your opponent's board? <laughs> you know what I find interesting? That uh, Chris has this Tyrant Scorn in hand, and I just have expected him to play his Teferi plus it, and then Tyrant Scorn the um, the Thief of Sandy because like Gandra couldn't counter spell it. I'm surprised you just use that like that. Yeah, it's definitely fair. Um, not sure what he's holding Tyrant Scorn for. 
We can't do it end of turn because A, it will not kill that. It will just bounce it. And B, because there's fairy in play. Yep. So we're going to see what he's got. He has a big old Teferi in his hand. He used that to tuck it. Big old Teferi. Big father Teferi. Um, so Gordon didn't draw a card off the Elite Guard Mage, right? Because of Narsa? I hope not. I was I, I, I looked away for a moment. Yeah, let's hope that didn't happen. All right. Chat, did he draw a card? <laughs> Uh, I hope he didn't draw a card. I'm gonna assume he didn't. Yeah, I'm gonna assume he didn't. So that's definitely something to have uh, been paying attention to. Nice. I can just go back in the VOD quickly while we're watching I this. think it might be a little too far along to advance it, but yeah, the knowledge okay. doesn't hurt. Because we're a little bit too far away. Yeah. Um. So I like I like Chris's position here. You know, having three planeswalkers is pretty nice, even if one of them is not really going to do much here. I mean, just having the passive in play is powerful, though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It is uh, no small game. Okay, so de-sparking the big Teferi, definitely a good place to start. Very flavorful, casting on a planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Casting a thief. So this thief is going to get hit by the Tyrant Spawn almost assuredly. Honestly, as soon as Chris casts Command the Dreadhorde, I don't think he can lose. Yeah, honestly. Like, he's going to be getting back uh, a Basilica Bellhaunt, uh, a Narset, and then whatever else. Like, he's going to likely kill this Thief. He's going to get back a Thief, a Bellhaunt, and a Narset, and that's already incredible. Yeah, and here's Teferi. <laughs> Chuck another guy. Here's Teferi. This is a Teferi. <laughs> you got to say, like, Cedric Phillips, you want to be the real Cedric Phillips. This is a Teferi. All right, I'm going to draw a card. Andrew Gordon here going to consult the grip. Consult the grip. Yeah, that's what Cedric Phillips says. You want to be a real Cedric Phillips impersonator? You got to know your lingo. Consult the grip. How about consult the Teferi? He also uh, says, you know, a new mythic rare from War of the Spark or whatever. He, he always, you know, lets you know the rarity in the set. Okay, of course. Here's a mythic rare from Dominaria. Get a minus three to attack another mythic rare from Dominaria. <laughs> 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 All right, here. Chris Hogg gonna untap draw here. Still has this this command the dreadhorde in his hand. I'm so excited. Yeah. He just drew a land. It's a shock land though, so little like makes the dreadhorde a little worse. I think I think he has other options and he can use the dreadhorde later on in the game to really seal the deal. It's a little bit awkward that he hasn't um, drawn there's like no creatures in the graveyards right now. No, uh, there's there's the bell haunt. That's it though. <laughs> yeah. I mean really I don't think that's what you're that's not really commanding the dreadhorde. That's true. It's, I wouldn't say you're commanding at that point. I'd say you're bullying the Dreadhorde. You're suggesting the Dreadhorde. Is this Teferi again? Is, All right, here we go. Teferi? A battle of two Teferis. Oh, finally, we're going to do some the little The thing different. is, Andrew Gordon's Teferis don't do anything. That's true. Well, the big Teferi doesn't do anything. Little one's not doing much either right now, but... You know, little Teferi doesn't actually do much. He's just an enchantment, basically. Yep. All right, we're going to plus the Teferi, points to the Narset, correctly identifies it. Well done, Chris. Remembering Planeswalker passes means you have a huge win. Yeah, I was getting ready to, to type something out here just in case. Mm. But. <laughs> All right, that's going to be an Elder spell? Oh, oh. Th this should just be game. He's going to ult his own Teferi. Oh, boy. Oh, what is? Yeah, what just happened? What just happened? What is happening? Oh, I think he tried to end of turn Elder Spell, but there's a Teferi in place, so oh, I think that's what happened there. I see, I see. But we're just gonna get that result real quickly. Uh, something, something, layering, something, something. A little quick fix. Yeah, just a simple mistake. Not a huge deal. Andrew Gordon for sure still probably gonna get Elder Spelled. Yeah, I think that's gonna spell the end of the game. Well, nice. Well done. <laughs> I was proud of that one. Oh, I thought it was pretty good. J Baby and S Dolly, absolutely. That's a that's another nickname for you. S Dolly, S. J Dolly. Baby. Oh baby, I love it. Yeah, it does not look like Andrew Gordon drew a card off the Elite Guard Mage. Okay, good. The first time around. Perfect. And yeah, it looks like the judge calls is happening right now about this. She just tried to end of turn the Elder Spell, right? Yeah, I assume that's what happened. Yeah, so he's gonna get a GRV or whatever, and, and it should be fine after that. Yeah. Be happens to the best of us. 
I mean, it is a little confusing when your one fairy says you can cast sorceries in an instant, the other one says you can't cast instant. So how's that? How's that work? I think it's a layering thing. Yeah. I think because I think it would say which one came down first, but I think also since the planeswalker's passive just says they can't. I think can't always overrides can. Oh, okay. I I would assume that's how it works. All right. I just got an I got a nod from a beautiful man in the crowd. Tell me I was right. Amazing. Perfect. There we go. Elder Spell's still going to be cast. Game's still going to be over. Chris Hall going to pick up this game one most yeah, likely. Yeah, I mean, kind of, <laughs> kind of absurd that, you know. Elder Spell? <laughs> yeah. I didn't think the uh, additional loyalty part of the card would matter much, but it's been a lot more impactful than uh, I first, first thought it would, for sure. Yeah. You ever, uh, oh. <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> No, just no, 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 I can't right. say it. What decks are they playing? I'm doing standard research. They're both, they're playing an Esper Hero Mirror, but uh, their lists are uh, slightly different. We're going to get the deck lists on camera as soon as possible, and you can see. Uh, Esper Hero, just basically Esper mid-range deck, so. Yeah, centered around casting multicolored spells with, uh, so you can maximize your uh, Hero Precinct one. Yeah. So what I, so what I was going to say is, it's like main decking, oh, all right, we almost took a fairy there. But, uh, so what I was going to say is, it's like when you main when you main deck Elder Spell, it's like main decking Fracturing Gust for your affinity opponents. So yeah. You just got this one of Plague Wind effect. What a, what a fun effect. We've seen some pretty big swings. Like, against uh, Derek Pite. <laughs> Poor that Derek was a big Pite. swing. Yo, press F to pay respects for Derek Pite, honestly. So F in the chat, please. F in the chat, please. That was rough. All right, so both players are going to shuffle. What do you like out of the board here, Sean? Yeah, let me just pull up their list. Quick little peeksy poo on this these lists. They're fine. Alright. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate the apps. See the username? Yeah. Well done. Uh, okay, so out of the sideboard for Chris, I think I like Duress, D Spark, Elder Spell. Ixlon's Binding and Command the Dread Horde. So that's one, two. He has another Command the Dread Horde. Yeah, so he has one Command the Dread Horde, one Ixlon's Binding, two Elder Spell, two D Spark, two Duress, two Cry the Carnarium, three Kaya's Wrath, two Lyra. I don't think I like the Lyra's, I don't like the Cries, I don't like the Kaya's Wraths, but I do like the Command, I do like the Ixlon's Binding, I like the two Elder Spell, two D Spark, and two Duress. Uh, I think Ixlon's Binding is good even though it can get bounced by either Teferi, like bounced or tucked. Um, still think it's probably pretty good. So the, the tough part in this matchup is you, you still need removal so, so you can kill their uh, their thieves and their heroes. But you also need to have uh, answers to non-creature spells. Um, so I think I like, okay, so definitely like cutting this fourth Basilica Bellhaunt. This card basically does nothing in this matchup. Okay. So that's four. I think you could cut like some number of Oath of Kaya, so like two or something like that. And after that, it gets a little tricky. Maybe some Tyrant Spawn, but you can't really cut too much on that. So I, I don't know actually how he's going to sideboard, but I do think the Elder Spell and the D Sparks probably have to come in along with the Command of the Dread Horde. I guess the two Duress and the Exxon's Binding just depend. Right. I, I think Duress has to come in still, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, and out of Gordon's sideboard, he has three Narset, two Elder Spell, uh, one Vraska's Contempt, two Cry the Carnarium, one Command of the Dread Horde, two Duress, two Vona. Butcher, Magon, two Do Dovin's Veto. So I like the two Dovin's Veto, I like the two Duress, I like the Command, I like the Vraska's Contempt, the Elder Spells, and the Narsets. Um, that's a lot of cards, though, so I don't know how he's exactly he's going to shift his deck. Like, I don't like the Lee Guard Mages, I don't like the Hostage Takers. Uh, after that, everything is reasonable. So, like, maybe you shave Tyrant Scorn, shave Oath of Kaya, but after that, I don't really know. Like, you. I don't know if it's crazy too, but you could cut like Thief of Sanity because of how poorly it lines up against like three mana to fairy. Right. But at the same time, it's it's a threat that must get answered or else it's going to take over the game. Right. So, I, I don't know. I gotta say, I'm still impressed that uh, Chris won that game after taking two Thief of Sanity hits. I think after, Oh, for sure. I think when my opponent hits me once with Thief of Sanity, I'm mentally checked out. You feel like out. you can never win. Yeah, yeah, it's like game over. I'm Definitely gonna, agree with that. My opponent is drowning me in the card advantage. I think that's the power of getting ahead on board with Planeswalkers, yep. him having the Narset in play and his opponent not having the Narset in play. Yep. So his Planeswalkers were doing more. Yep. And uh, then being able, I mean, the Elder Spell get putting a Teferi Emblem in play is just unbeatable. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, ever correct to like, do you think it's correct in the mirror to shave like some number of hero pre ones? 
It could be, but the the matchup is so much about planeswalkers that just having a hero lets you pressure theirs. And if your opponent doesn't have that answer, which they won't uh, more often after board, because they will be shaving some answers to hero precinct one. Yep. Being able to have that advantage is huge, especially just like go hero precinct one on turn five and cast a, a multicolored three mana spell like a Teferi. Getting that 1-1-1, one, 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 even if your 2-2 two, two gets answered, that 1-1 one, one will actually have a huge impact on the board. It can kill Narsets that are at one, uh, one loyalty. Okay. Or like if a Teferi comes down and minuses, it's at one loyalty. Yep. Right? Uh, so having these, like some, some number of power and toughness on the board to, to check these Planeswalkers is important. All right, both players shuffle up. Both players are going to draw sevens. Hope we're going to have a nice, good, clean game of Magic. Yeah, I, I think Andrew Gordon's hand is pretty decent. He has a, a, pre, a hero precinct uh, one on turn two, backed up with some Teferis, of Raska's Contempt. Maybe a little land light, but like two or three lander can't really maul that. No, maybe no white if he has a hero? He might just be slow rolling the hero as well. So to wait to make sure he can play a spell the same turn? Definitely possible. He did just hit a white source and he's playing it, so. All right, there we go. This is a hero precinct one. Yeah, I think I thought that was a planes in his hand, but I think that's an island. Yeah, so. I, I still I think it is also a planes. I see it. It looks like a planes. Maybe it's a foil island. Yeah, I think it might just be an island. Godless Shrine shocked. This it's is probably a thief or a Teferi. Oh, is that? Oh, that's a animate Teferi. Animate Teferi gonna come into play. Gonna yell some Hadouken ability and then bounce the bounce the hero precinct one. Yamate. Yamata. <laughs> <laughs> Itadaki Masu. Okay. <laughs> this is a Japanese stream now. This is a weeb stream. It's a right. weeb stream, dude. It's so, like, yo, what anime are you watching this season? Uh, yes. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> My Hero Academia. <laughs> All right. Uh, Teferi just bounced it, replayed Hero, played a tapped land. So, this is Chris Hall's chance to, like, cleanly answer it. Oh, okay. Bel so, I'm, I's I'm pretty surprised that this Belhaunt's still in the deck. But, I mean, it looks pretty good here. It's going to break this, this Hero, protect the Teferi get a card out of uh, Andrew's hand? It's going to, uh, most importantly, gain him three life. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's good for Commander Dreadward. Yeah, can you put three loyalty on Teferi instead of gaining three life? Judd. <laughs> right, hey, what? What? <laughs> it's like gaining three life. Okay. All right, Vraska's going to that, wow. that's, that's an amazing trade for Chris. Get, a, get a, 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 like a super relevant card out of your opponent's hand, uh, put a blocker in front to protect your Teferi. You got to be nervous, though, when they do that. That they did when they discard the contempt. Yeah, yeah they're, they, I mean that means their hands gas and they're not. Uh, they're either land light or don't have excess lands. So yeah. they're like like you said, yeah, their hands gas basically. He's gonna tuck the bell haunt, kill the Teferi. Yeah, that's a good sequence for uh, Andrew. Still not sure that I like these uh, bell haunts after board. Feels yeah. like they just don't have like they don't block thief. Uh, they do fight for board, but like the, the game three life doesn't really matter. It's four mana, three, four. But very good there, I will say. Oh, there's a thought erasure. We need to see what else is. Oh, wow. hands gas. Still have all of these. <laughs> I don't know what's in Chris's hand, but yeah, Ugin's just incredibly powerful. Though it doesn't trigger Hero Precinct 1. Ah, very true. I don't know why this is in the deck. Exactly. Bad card. It does make your second Ugin cost less. True. True, 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 true. All right, so we're going to surveil a land of the bin. Oh, uh, I was about to say, did Chris not play a land? Okay. He's okay, he, he, he recovered at the end. Heads up play, heads up play. Playing lands. Playing a land every turn is actually just kind of broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine playing lands every turn. Imagine drawing a, tur a card every turn. <laughs> Imagine playing 17 lands in a row and then still not conceding when your opponent Lillian ults you. <laughs> Shout out to Derek Pite. Shout out to Pite. <laughs> Shout out to the ginger. Oh, this is going to be a D-spark. Wait, wait. Why is he D-sparking now? Yeah, I'm a little confused why he didn't do this on his turn. Oh, maybe it's because he thought a rage him and saw the second Teferi and said, okay, I'm going to wait so my they opponent can't play Teferi again. Yeah. I don't really understand why. But didn't he just let his opponent draw an extra card? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't Look, love just, that. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Uh, I don't. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess this stops your opponent from. Okay, you know what? This is reasonable. I guess. But th though, okay, if you have your own Teferi in hand, if you lead your opponent into, you despark their Teferi, they untap, cast a fairy, you untap Teferi minus on their Teferi. I guess then the hero precinct one kills your Teferi. Yep. So it's not great for you. You wanna, you probably wanna cast uh, Cry the Canarian before that. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Chris is holding it. I understand he wants to use it 
to get the um, the Thief of Sanity that's in uh, Andrew Gordon's hand. But yeah, now he just gets to take it, and yeah, this is not looking. This is uh, the worst case scenario for sure. But Chris Hall might just draw another one and make us all look silly. Imagine drawing Cry the Carnarium. Really. Oh, that should be nuts. Big draw. Oh, Basilica Belcon. It was there. We knew it was there. See, this is the thing. Uh, like, Basilica, Basilica Belcon just doesn't do anything now. Yeah. He's going to discard the other card and then just play another Teferi next turn. Yep. I said the heart in the chat. All right, sorry. I had no, to send a heart. Shout out to Ozmeister. Yeah, everybody. Everybody loves Detective Dollywell. Yo, I'm feeling the love Twitch chat. I'm feeling it. <laughs> send me your energy. Give me your energy. Send me your weeb chat. Here is its fairy. Yeah, he just has to minus on the thief. Yeah, it's not looking good. Yeah. You know. This, this game's looking pretty rough for Chris. And this is what I was saying about um, Hero Precinct 1. So you see this like Planeswalker fight, right? Yeah. But every time Chris plays a Planeswalker, his just dies. Yeah. But if, if Andrew ever plays a Planeswalker, Chris needs a removal spell like D-Spark. Yeah. So th this is where getting ahead on board with something like Hero Precinct 1 is, is amazing. Now, now even if Chris draws a removal spell for the T2, there's still three 1-1s one on board that threaten every Planeswalker that can come down. Yeah. Other than Liliana. But uh, Andrew has a has the Teferi for the Liliana in, in Chris's hand. Yep. So, I don't know. Chris is, Chris is in a tough spot for sure. Like, you might just have to go Lily plus. Just not, not loving that play, but... Let him tuck it and then block. Yeah. Yeah. Melhan again. Yeah, I mean, this is similar to the Liliana play. I guess it, this is... If I, this gets tucked, it's less bad for you. At least you're getting a card out of your opponent's hand. Yeah. It's definitely doing something. And that's important. Yeah, you always want to do something. Words to live by. Words to live by. Always be doing something. Yeah. Detective Dollywell. It might not be a great thing, did you but see, if it's something. Did you see Detective Pikachu? Not yet. <laughs> no, no, baby. Dude, I got debated by the, the video where it's like you it got uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. And it was actually just Pikachu dancing. Oh, get right. I don't right. know if you saw that. I did not. I just saw the movie in theaters because I didn't want to watch it for free because I was prepared to support the company that That's made not it. what I'm trying to say. All right, commercial break. Go support the movie in theaters now. All right, this is a Thief of Sanity again. It's back. Yeah, Chris just has to draw something. Like, maybe Chris brought in Kai's Wrath. Oh, gain one life. Yeah. Maybe he'll draw all his dust. That will cleanly answer the board. It would. Uh, I think Command the Dreadhorse still probably just wins in the game. Yeah, that card is pretty hard not to win the game. With. Like, you're going to get Ugin to Fairy. That's it? That's good enough. Yeah, I guess the, the Ugin will kill the Teferi. The Teferi will minus on the Thief, but you're still in a bad spot. Yeah. You just took like 11? Let me see what he has. Small to vary. And this is a Dovin's Veto. Yeah. I gotta say, Dovin's Veto makes the stack a lot less interesting. Yep. <laughs> and you, you just have to Dovin's Veto the small to fairy because you won't be able to use it otherwise. Yeah. Alright, well, as soon as Chris loses his 3 4, I mean, it doesn't even matter, honestly. Andrew's getting ahead with uh, to fairy. But Chris's only d defense is his 3 4. As soon as that's gone, the floodgates get opened. I think Andrew has a D spark in hand, but he's like considering just not casting it because it just doesn't matter. Andrew can still probably attack with some of his one ones though. Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't actually matter. This hero precinct one has made so many one ones. I've changed my mind. This card is unbeatable. Yeah, and I think I like attacking here. The more damage you deal, the worse command the the dreadhorde gets. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think uh, Andrew knows? I think he knows the the, the jig. Oh, he does know now. He, he uh, literally saw one. Is he, he, just, it? he just took command oh, the dreadhorde. My word. Cast it. Andrew, cast it. Command, take the power into your hands. Yeah, like, I think I see a D-Spark in Andrew's hand, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just not casting it here. Oh, this is enough. Salt in a wound right here. Hopefully he misses, for uh, Chris's sake. <laughs> nope. Thought of Razor. I mean, that's one of the better ones. I think he's just going to cast it and then untap two lands with Teferi. Yep. Gets to hold up some uh, instant speed uh, interaction, you know, some D sparks and whatnot. 
So maybe a Doman Zero off the top? Yeah, honestly, the Lillian doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm just taking Narsa. And Chris is just taking his cards and putting them back into his deck. Okay. Do you th did they all get talked by Teferi? Is, yeah. that, is that what's going on? I'd like to talk my life. Please go under the mat, Chris. So I think Chris needs to reevaluate his plan for this matchup. I, I, I hope this game showed him that Basilica Belhaunt isn't great. Yep. Um, like, it, it was at the point where Andrew just didn't despark it because he just it just didn't matter. Yeah, you, know, you know what? He doesn't have flying. That's, that's why I was saying I think Andrew's ahead in that department because he has elite guard mages. But I, I also think elite guard mage is not a great card in this matchup. <laughs> so I, I, think, I think Andrew's like not going to have elite guard mage. Yeah, you can see right there. You, all his elite guard mages are in the sideboard. Yeah, okay. Along so. with Hero Precinct 1. I think he has one or two in the sideboard. Okay. That, he has that, one in the sideboard, yeah. We'll see if Chris wants to do any sideboard reevaluation. Looks like he is. Yeah, I mean, play draw also matters in this matchup. Some cards get a lot better on the play, some get a lot worse on the draw. Right. Definitely, uh, definitely a lot to think about. This yeah. Matchup, this matchup is a mess, is what I would say. Big Another mess. thing, definitely. Another thing to uh, consider in this matchup is how your opponent's sideboarding. Yep. Um, when it comes to mid range battles, how your opponent sideboards is almost more important than how you sideboard. Right. Because figuring out how your, your opponent's sideboarding lets you sideboard in a way that your, line, your cards will line up uh, well against theirs. And you can try to invalidate some of their strategies when they're sideboarding. It's a big old mind game. Yeah, like, for example, if I'm playing against you and I know you're siding out all your creatures because yeah. you're a madman, yeah. then I can... Every time. Yeah, th then I know, you know, certain cards I don't have to have in my deck, like Tyrant Squad. Or, like, Cry the Crane game. Exactly. But or if you think your opponent is keeping in all their creature interaction, you can just sideboard all your creatures. Like, I'm not saying that's a, a great strategy, but it's just an example. Okay, so do you think Andrew Gordon should sideboard all his creatures and Planeswalkers? Because he knows Chris Haw has Command the Dreadhorn in his deck. I think that actually makes sense. You go for the mill plan. <laughs> if you just answer everything Chris does... Like, what can you do? Just, oh, actually, no. Andrew's on the draw. Though. Oh, true. Snap plan doesn't work. <laughs> um, you can't mill him out. He's got the one extra card in his deck. <laughs> Unlucky, dude. Yeah. So yeah, I, th I think I, I think Chris looks like he's ready to present. Yeah, his, his deck's over on Andrew's side. Andrew's just doing some, you know, Andrew's small touch-ups, making sure all the call his eggs are in the right basket. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Third game. I think Chris is hoping for a, a hand where he gets to snowball. You know, go uh, hero into maybe three mana to fairy into. Hold up Dovin's Veto, Thought Erasure <laughs> you, you know, turn five to fairy, that's the nuts. Yeah, just like, I think, or like looking for some amount of discard, maybe a negate. Yeah, Chris is like, happy, I think. Yeah, Gordon's mulling, it looked like his hand had no lands. Now, mid range mirrors, you're a real mid range master. So let me tell you, mulliganing mid, mid range mirrors never feels good, right? Oh, for sure. Uh, at least this form, I, I was about to say, at least this form doesn't have Thoughtseize, but that's not even true because it's Thought Erasure. Yeah. So, Mulling is already pretty punishing in mid range mirrors because all your cards are going to be relevant most of the time. Yeah. So it's, it's not like against Mono Red where if you mull to six, it's fine because you're looking for key interactive pieces and not all your cards are going to be relevant anyway. Right. But when you're playing mid range mirrors, you're going to be casting all your, your, your cards, you're going to need to be hitting a lot of your land drops. So it's particularly punishing uh, in mid range, mid, uh, mid range matchups. And then also, when you go lower on cards and your opponent has Thoughtseize and Duress Effects, yeah. they're going to be able to pick apart certain uh, key parts of your hand so that you can't interact with what they're doing. Like, for example, let's say Chris is going to try to uh, have a, an unchecked hero win the game. Yeah. He can Thought Erasure the answer to the hero and, and win that way, or like a Thief of Sanity. Right, so we're seeing a Thought Erasure being cast right here from uh, Andrew Gordon. He sees a basic planes, a God the Shrine, a Teferi, uh, so other Teferi, <laughs> sorry, a small Teferi, a big Teferi, a D-Spark, and Noth of Kaya. What do you like taking here? Uh, it all just depends on Andrew's hand. Uh, and, and I think I probably, yeah, I was about to say, I think I probably like taking the Teferi. This leaves uh, Chris with two lands, two reactive cards, and a five mana Teferi, which is pretty far away. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Andrew has Dovin's Veto that he can hold up for that anyway. I yeah. also think uh, it looks like Andrew was pretty land light and has drawn two lands off the top. So definitely uh, this mulligan is working out a lot better than... Uh, it, it might have uh, if he hadn't hit those lands. Right. I gotta say, I'm a little surprised Andrew Gordon ran out the Thief of Sandy just to get Othakaya. It suggests that he has pretty strong follow up, but uh, or like maybe he just doesn't, needs to play something because he's pressured because he doesn't have any lands. Yeah, he might just be thinking that he needs to use his mana. No. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right way to play that, but 
I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah, he does get to leave up Dobin's veto here. He has a Veracity Contempt, a Hostage Trigger. He's got a whole host of goodness, but he needs to be able to cast some. Closes the Thought Erasure? Okay. I mean, you just have to veto this. Yeah. Unless you have two vetoes, then it becomes a little interesting. Right. A little zesty. Oh, okay. That was an amazing draw. So, if, if Chris draws something like Liliana, Ugin, uh, Teferi, Narset, any of these kind of cards, he's going to be super far ahead. If he bricks on this draw step, it's going to be pretty bad for him. Because Andrew's ahead. He has a full, gr like, uh, in terms of cards, like, action. Like, Andrew's missing lands, but his hand is, like, full of action. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as uh, he's able to start deploying cards like this, um, he's going to start pulling ahead. Um, and, and Chris just has nothing going on. So even though he had hit his land drops first, he's just not doing anything with them. Right. And uh, Andrew Gordon did draw a land. He drew another land. He's drawn out of this uh, mulligan, it looks like. I think he might have a second Dovin. No, it's a hostage taker. Never mind. He, so he knows about the D-Spark, but he just drew an Ugin. So I think I like running out this uh, Teferi. You let your Teferi get D-Sparked, and then you untap and get to uh, resolve an Ugin. Yeah. And you know it's resolving because of the small Teferi. Right. There's the D-Spark. He has to use it on his turn because of the small Teferi. No, it's, it's very likely Chris is holding more uh, answers because he stopped playing lands and he didn't play threats, so his hand has to just be answers. Right. Hopefully, for Chris, it's not Dovin's Veto because that's being turned off completely. Yep. It's probably not because Andrew would have got his uh, Teferi Dovin's Veto, like the three mana one. But, uh, what Chris really needs is it to be Command the Dreadhorde. Oh, uh, yeah. Command the Dreadhorde, we, we keep going back to this, but yeah, it would it'd be just be incredible at any point. Like, uh, there's a Thief of Sanity, a five mana Teferi, and a three mana Teferi in play, or in the graveyard. Yep. The Elder Spell would also be really good. Yep. Elder Spell would be amazing. A lot of draws for Chris, but he, he needs to hit them soon. If this, if this Ugin gets to activate two or three times, the game's just going to end. Yeah. So this is probably going to be Bounce My Oath. Oh, wow, okay. I, I think I would have bounced Oath and killed my opponent's Teferi. Just, tra just traded your Teferi? I think so. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, minus, like, minus Teferi on the, uh, on the Oath Akaya, and then Oath Akaya my opponent's Teferi. Right. Like, this Teferi on one's not going to do anything. It's just going to die next turn. Yeah. Like, you have to tick it up twice more for it to do something. Right. Yeah, not looking super good for uh, yeah. Chris here. I mean, I guess if, let's say Chris has a Command the Dread Horde or something that he doesn't want to get countered, it's better to do this, because then he has a Teferi in play so that uh, Dovin's Veto does nothing. Right. That's the only upside I can think of for this. I see a couple lands being grabbed here by Andrew. So he's considering casting one of those fancy, fancy spells in his hand. Mm -hmm. Casting spells is pretty powerful. I agree. I keep going back to this, but whenever you cast a spell, you're doing something. Okay, so he's main phasing the Rascal Temp. That does this has to mean he has a Dovin's Veto on him. That would suggest heavily that it is a Dovin's right? Veto. I think the card he manifested with Ugin, by the way, was a uh, Thief of Sanity, by the way. Mm. That's what I saw. This has to be Dovin's Veto, right? That's the only reason you do that? Yeah, I can't really... Like, otherwise, he's just throwing away a good spell. Still leaving Basilica Bell on him. I think I'm just discarding Tyrant Scorn. I think he has Tyrant Scorn and Elder Spell on him. I also... I, th I think I think Andrew... Uh, I thought he was sitting on Hostage Taker from a million yeah. years ago. So he, sorry, yeah. He has Hostage Taker and Elder Spell. So those are definitely better than the... Uh, the... Um, Tyrant score, and if he draws land here, it's pretty nice. He can just go to Hostage Taker, take your Bell Haunt, cast Bell Haunt. I think this is interesting because Chris knew he had the Hostage Taker, but yet he still pressed into playing the uh, Silica Bell Haunt. Yeah. So he's just gonna. Oh, okay. So he's gonna draw a card. Not bounce anything. I like that. Yeah. I, you can assume that the card under, like the, the manifested card. So, okay. I think I would have liked Andrew manifesting first. And the reason to manifest first is, let's say you manifest a Dovin's Veto. I think you just want to minus your Teferi on the Dovin's Veto and put it in your hand. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely probably right. We're going to see Big Teferi here. going to come in plus. Just do Big Teferi things. Chris here is untapped, but does nothing, passes the turn. That's not exactly where you <laughs> yeah, want to be. Yeah, not where you want to be, that's for sure. I think uh, as soon as Andrew Gordon finds a um, 
Dovin's veto, he's gonna win. Like he's already super far ahead, but as soon as he finds Dovin's veto, the game's locked up because, like, Chris's only real out is Elder Spell, and if you have that covered, you're gonna win. He also found a copy of the rest. Yeah, like. it's probably just gonna dress him in the draw stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is looking worse and worse. Just an absolute embarrassment of riches. Yep. I, and I, I think this is how the games go a lot. Like, the games are, like, kind of close. You're jockeying for position. And then someone has five Planeswalkers in play. <laughs> That's the standard format in a nutshell. And then somebody plays the Elder Spell. Okay. Chris discards the Swamp. How many cards does Chris have? Does he have a bunch? I think he has, like, two or three. Maybe he can set up a play where he plays Liliana plus uh, the Elder Spell this turn and comes back. There's, I don't think there's a way. I, a Liliana plus Elder Spell, I guess. But Andrew has a, a Duress now, so you can't even do that. So just draw step Duress him? I would draw step Duress, unless you're holding him Dovin's Veto. Oh, he's just not doing it. I don't know. Uh, do you Duress in response to the Thought Erasure? Maybe. Wow, yeah. Oh, no, he did plus his Teferi, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he did plus his Teferi. He's a duress. So and he, look at Chris. Like, what do I do? Yeah. I mean, I think I think Chris knows that there's no way he's winning this game. Except for Elder Spell plus Liliana. Even that. Like, uh, Andrew can just, in response, Elder Spell uh, Chris's Liliana because he's plus with Teferi. Uh, <laughs> what a format we live in. Yeah. Just Planeswalkers, Elder Spells, Ultimates. You know, just what everyone loves about Magic. Everyone loves... This format is built on Planeswalkers and mono-red one-drops. Yep. And goblins. Bad mono-red mono one-drops. What are you trying to say about Kichu Lava Runner? No, Lava Runner's nice. Okay. The one one's a little suspect. Fanatical Firebrand? Yeah. How dare you. The monkey. The mo <laughs> what are you trying to I think he's a goblin. Yeah, he's a goblin, but he oh. looks like a monkey, so he's a monkey. What a monkey. Yeah. All right. That's Chris, yeah, that's going to be game. Chris says tonight... Uh, tonight is enough. Yeah. Right, I mean, you know, the game's kind of close, and then one person's just land, you know, snowballing a, a pretty huge advantage. So. Well, I mean, one person's pushing a Mack truck with no wheels up a hill in in the rain, and the other person is just walking down the street. One person's going to get to their destination a lot faster. And it's going to be Andrew Gordon, who's going to be advancing to 5 and 0. Chris, still very real to top eight this event at 4 and 1 now. Yep, great record still. Great record. Gonna have to walk away though on proud. Definitely, uh, definitely would like to ask him if he should board, if why he didn't board out Basilica Bell. Yeah, it's a, I think that's a, something we should ask. Uh, we, we'll see if we can get the players over here for a quick, uh, quick word. Is this format super control heavy, Sean? Because well, I think control decks have have a hard time dealing with planeswalkers. Like control decks aren't able to beat the card like Commander Dreadhorde, for example, and and like control decks. It can't really play counter smalls because of three mana to ferry. So I, I think what this this um, I think what this format boils down to is a bunch of like super friends decks that play command the dread board. Uh, so they're not like control decks, but so they're play, just they're just playing a bunch of planeswalkers. Uh, uh, then there's the command the dread horde decks with the, the that are centered around planeswalkers and commanding the dread horde them. But like that that's facilitated by the explore package. You have your mono red beatdown deck, your mono white beatdown deck. So I don't think control really has a place because it, it's just lining up, lining up pretty poorly against uh, planeswalkers in general. Its counter spells are invalidated by three mana to fairy, and um, it just can't put creatures on the board to pressure the opponent's planeswalkers. That's why I think mid range decks are thriving a lot 